Hey everyone, and welcome to another hemp tip. Today we'll be going over some tips on the hemp seedling stage. The seedling stage is where the plant is at its most vulnerable state. Since it's still slowly developing its support structure both above and below ground. So if any major problems happen to arise during this initial growth period, the plant has the highest chance of dying during the stage of growth. And this period usually runs for about a week or two after the seed has germinated. Because once the plant's root structure is stabilized below ground, and a couple of true leaves have appeared above ground, the plant is much more able to withstand any problems thrown at it when it officially goes into its vegetative stage. With this period of growth being so crucial and short, it's the reason why we always recommend starting a grow in as small of a space as possible because with the smaller space, it's a lot easier and cheaper to fine tune the environment the seedling is in. Case in point, below ground, seedling roots need both a mix of oxygen, water, and warmth. The need of both oxygen and water has always been a bane for new growers, as no one wants to underwater their plant. So more often than not, seedlings get overwatered, and when this is done in a large planter, the water has nowhere else to go, so it just stays in the pot. As the roots try to expand out looking for oxygen, it'll just keep finding more and more water surrounding it until the plant eventually drowns. But by using a super small container to start a seedling in, such as a seedling tray, it makes it much harder to oversaturate the root zone because even if you do, the excess water will run off the seedling tray and when the roots reaches the edges of the seedling tray, at least it's able to get some oxygen that way since the edges are the areas that dry off first. But what about warmth? In a large planter, this is almost never an issue since any potty mix or soil is going to provide a good insulation for the root zone. But like we said before, when you scale down the size of the grow, it's a lot easier to control things such as temperature, so a cheap way to do this is just with the seedling mat. Now above ground, seedlings thrive in 60 to 80 percent relative humidity, and for anyone living in a dry environment, this will be hard to maintain in a large space, requiring a decent sized humidifier running essentially non-stop. Scaled down though, a humidity dome can easily maintain this amount of humidity with no additional work. And this cost savings doesn't just stop there, because now that the plants are taking up less of a footprint, you can easily scale down the lighting as well for the first few weeks to be targeted at just the seedlings and not the entire grow space. So yeah, with just a small investment into something like a humidity dome, in the long run, you'll save on space, money, and have a higher success rate for your seedlings surviving. There is one drawback though, with providing seedlings the perfect environment. And that's the fact that once you move the seedlings into a harsher environment, they might have a problem adapting to it. This is where hardening off comes in. Hardening off basically is just providing a transition from the perfect seedling environment to the environment the seedling is going to be transplanted into. And the easiest way to do this is by exposing the seedling to their final environment for a short period of time each day and then gradually increasing this period of time more and more until the seedlings are finally transplanted into its new environment. Generally, I'd recommend doing this over a period of at least two to three days. And if you don't, the sudden change in temperature and humidity might completely dry out 
all the above ground growth, as seen here. At this point, it probably won't kill your plants, since now that it's in the vegetative stage, a plant should be able to recover given enough time. But you might lose a week or so in grow time, or God forbid, if working with autoflowers, the plant might start flowering too small, which means you'd have to start over. And that's it. Like the content? Then be sure to check out our beginner's guide to creating CBD products from scratch available at Amazon in print and digital, with links in the description below. You can also find us at hempinapot.com.